Jefferson Mays and Bryce Pinkham star in A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, a new madcap musical comedy about one gentleman's quest to eliminate his family and inherit a fortune. We're meeting the cast and getting their guide to this brand new musical adventure. How do you describe the show to your friends and family? What do you say to describe this crazy musical? Uh, I would describe it as a very uh, Oscar Wildean play with amazing, legit theater music. The show is about a social climber who discovers that he's related to a very important wealthy family. He decides to kill all of those relatives that stand before him in the line of succession, all played by Jefferson Mays. Hopefully, um, if I do it right, you'll root for him. You play eight different characters. Yeah. When that was presented to you, how did you wrap your head around it? How did you come up with these eight different voices? I was very excited about it. I think uh, as an actor, you always want to play all the parts yourself. And I just sort of pulled them from the central casting office of my imagination. What tone were you going for with this? Were you going for that good old-fashioned musical comedy element? I, I think we thought, of, you know, we thought about English music halls, you know, so that was kind of the idea. And, um, and we looked scenically the pieces inspired by Victorian toy theaters and choreography, it's very much of the era. It's actually a very polite, funny show about killing your relatives. I think that there's a certain thrill and joy to seeing somebody kind of climb their way up, especially through scheming murder. I think it's kind of a love letter to the entire history of musical comedy and on both sides of the Atlantic. Imagine if Gilbert and Sullivan were bored one night and they called up Charles Dickens. They were like, hey, Charles, um, do you want to come over? And Charles Dickens was like, yeah, I'd love to. What are you guys up to? And they're like, oh, we're just watching the first season of Downton Abbey. Do you watch? And he's like, yeah, I totally watch. I would love to watch that. I'll come over. They come over. They take like a hit of laughing gas and then watch the entire season and then write a musical. about this musical? Um, the, the fact that it makes me laugh every time I hear any of it and, and, and how fabulous the tunes are and how, what a high degree of wit and charm it has uh, and, and dastardliness all at the same time. It feels naughty, to be honest. <laughs> and it's so authentically British, that's what I love about it. When I read it the first time, I thought, oh my goodness, I need to be in this. What have audiences said about the show? Is there anything that someone has said that stuck with you uh, that you've heard? Oh my God. Um, well, I, I will say this, um, and forgive the, well, the immodesty of this, but Robert knows, because we both saw it, people would get up in at Hartford and in San Diego at intermission and walk to the box office and buy tickets for the next time they'd come back. And to bring their friends and family. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty great. My wife has gone into the ladies' room at the interval and then overheard a variation of the following conversations. Like, isn't it wonderful that they got uh, actors that all vaguely resembled each other to play the eight different roles? And, um, and that makes me really happy and really depressed simultaneously. You know the expression falling in the aisles? People were falling in the aisles. Um, they were just bowled over. I mean, it, it really is a fun, fun show. It never gets old for me. If you had to quantify it, how much fun am I going to have at this show when I see this? Um, I'm hoping that you will become incontinent and lose control completely. <laughs> Sex is better with a...